Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the ever-changing world of technology? Tech It Out can help make some sense of it all. Breaking down geek speak into street speak, technology columnist, author, and TV personality Mark Saltzman covers consumer technology each week for every listener. Mark tackles the latest news, reviews, and how-tos to help you understand what's hot, what's not, and why. Hey everyone, welcome to the 218th episode of Tech It Out on this second last weekend of October. Hope you're all doing well. Love Halloween, so I can't wait for next weekend. A party with some friends and my costume just came. It's based on a very popular Netflix show right now, a dark one. It's a foreign TV show that has become a huge billion dollar hit for Netflix around the world. Can you guess what my wife Kelly and I are dressing up as? If you can figure it out, let me know on social media. I'm on all the platforms, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And it's Mark with a C, S A L T Z M A N. All right, we have a stellar Tech It Out plan for you with two different guests this hour. In a moment, we're going to learn what's new with Slick Deals, the website, app, and browser extension that can save you serious money. Also on the show today is a chat about cybersecurity ratings. Companies need to know where they stand in terms of vulnerability to cyber attacks, including ransomware. And the same could be said when you want to work with another company. You want to know if you're putting yourself at risk. So we're going to catch up with the leaders in this space, BitSight, and how they give companies a kind of credit rating, if you will, a numerical score, a snapshot of where they stand when it comes to cybersecurity and for third parties that they're looking to work with. So BitSight's Chief Technical Officer Stephen Boyer will join us, as well as a company called Third Party Trust. Their CEO, Anders Noremo, will also be in on the interview. This will dominate much of today's show. At the end, I'll also spend five minutes talking about smart home tech, but a lot to get to on a brand new episode of Tech It Out, powered by Asus for those in search of incredible. I'll tell you more about them shortly, but let's officially kick off the show. You know, I always get a ton of messages after I talk about slick deals on this show. This is a website, a browser extension, and an app, all designed with one thing in mind, to help save you money. Who doesn't like that? Joining us to chat about what's new with Slick Deals, including a look at Slick Deals rewards, we've got Chris Ashbaugh on the line. He is the Senior Product Manager of Loyalty at Slick Deals. Welcome to the show, Chris. Mark, thank you for having me. Big fan. Oh, thank you. Great chatting with you. You know, I believe in transparency, so I want our listeners to know that I've officially partnered with Slick Deals once again on the Tech It Out show, as I did last year. And this is for the remaining weeks we have in 2021. So thank you to Slick Deals for your support. And thank you, Chris. And my listeners will understand why I'm so excited to work with Slick Deals, no doubt, after hearing this interview. So why don't we jump right in? Before we get to Slick Deals rewards and an event that you have coming up, let's start off at a high level. What is Slick Deals all about? Yeah. So Slick Deals is the only shopping platform powered by millions of real shoppers. It's literally shoppers helping shoppers. We've all had that moment before where we buy something and we instantly have buyer's remorse because maybe a new version of it came out or we could have gotten a better price. Yeah. I know I've had that experience. Our goal is the opposite. So we help savvy shoppers win at shopping by providing insights from millions of real people on what products to buy and where to buy them at the best price. All right. So it's a community of shoppers and you could say hey i want to buy a 60 inch tv and you can go to slick deals whether it's the through the browser extension through the app or through the website and you can keep your eye on something that you've had in mind and you may see if it graduates to the front page of slick deals some of the hottest deals going on at that moment whether it's a tv or not but you can also identify what you're interested in buying right yeah, absolutely. You can set up alerts so that um, you can track different products or brands, but you can also follow uh, what the community thinks is the best purchase. Mm -hmm. So it's real users posting deals and then voting on deals they love, commenting. And the comments are things like, I bought this last year. Here's a great setup. This is a great audio cable if you want to do a split setup. Back to like linking you to other deal threads and yeah. telling you this is actually a better product to buy. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, like this might be $20 more, but it's a much better product. Yeah. Also, you're, through your community, it also vets these deals, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Users will vote things up and down and they'll also expire deals themselves when they see that it's gone dark. Um, they also add two deals. So sometimes a deal will get posted and a user will realize that if you use a special credit card or sign up for the store's newsletter, it'll actually stack discounts. And now with Slick Deals Rewards, it's even better because no matter how many deals you've stacked on top of it, your final price, you get cash back on that purchase. 
Awesome. So with that in mind, let's talk more about Slick Deals Rewards. What is it all about? Yeah, so I'm really excited to talk about Slick Deals Rewards. Slick Deals Rewards is our newest tool that enables users to receive cash back at participating retailers. You see a discount on a laptop and you get really excited and our community will help you stack deals on top of that. We also have the Slick Deals extension, which lets you auto apply coupons as you shop. But whatever the final discount price you get, Slick Deals Rewards is one step further. So it allows you to apply cash back on top of an already great deal. So whatever the final price, you also get Slick Deals Rewards points. So Slick Deals Rewards is your own rewards program. It's not like a retailer that's offering a rewards or loyalty program. It's This is your own. Yeah, exactly. So Slick Deals has historically helped shoppers find the best deals on the website, and it's all community powered. Mm -hmm. When we started Slick Deals Rewards, we wanted to give back to that community. So really, it's about finding the best deal on the product and a product that you love. And then Slick Deals Rewards rewards you for shopping through Slick Deals. Okay, got it. And do you earn points that you can redeem for more cash back on products? Or what is it exactly that you're rewarded? You do. Yeah. You earn, so you'll get percentage cash back on most of your purchases and then you get points for every purchase. And those points can then be redeemed for PayPal credit or gift cards. Wow. That's really cool. So I know, yeah. as I mentioned in my introduction, Chris, that Slick Deals is a website, an app and a browser extension, but I understand Slick Deals Rewards is linked specifically to the browser extension, if I'm not mistaken. It is, yes. Slick Deals browser extension allows users to take Slick Deals with them as they shop. So it analyzes the most important considerations for shoppers, serves up the brand, product, details that meet all the criteria of what the user is looking for. So let's say you're already shopping on Macy's.com. Instead of having to go look for a coupon code like we did the old way, this will actually auto apply every coupon that the extension knows about and has seen other users utilize. And it'll stack all these coupons on top of it. And now Slick Deals rewards is inside the extension. So you can also activate cash back. So you can stack discounts and then get an extra savings at the end. And does it matter what browser you use? Does Slick Deals browser extension work for many of them? We are on Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. Okay, cool. So walk us through, Chris, how to get started. We are chatting, by the way, with Chris Ashbaugh. He is Senior Product Manager of Loyalty at Slick Deals. This is a platform that helps save you money and even more so with Slick Deals rewards. Walk us through how it works, please, from start to finish. Finish. Yeah, it's super easy. The Slick Deals Rewards program works by allowing members to opt into various available offers through the Slick Deals extension. You do need the extension to activate cash back. Yeah. When you land on a store site, you'll see a cash back offer pop up. Once you activate it, you then go about your business, make your purchases, and we take care of everything else. So once you've checked out, we work with the store to validate the purchase. And once the purchase is closed, you get the points banked in your account. Awesome. All right. So it does depend on the retailer, though. It's not across the board, just to be clear. Yeah, we're adding more retailers every day. We are really excited to expand this and help shoppers find discounts at every store they could conceivably shop at. And if your listeners are interested, they can go to slickdeals.net slash rewards on your desktop. This will walk you through all the steps of installing the browser extension and creating a rewards account. Okay. We'll plug that website address again. Just to be clear, this is a tech show, but we're not just talking about electronics here. Like you said, Macy's as an example. So it could be apparel, home furnishings. Absolutely. Every type of category we have covered. So from sunglasses to shoes, to general apparel, to tools, everything you can think of, even travel. Yeah. I was going to ask you, it's not even just tangible products, right? Like it's also services like Absolutely. flights and stuff, right? Yep. Okay. Chris, before we move on, can you give us an example of like what a slick deals rewards may look like? Yeah, absolutely. So for example, you mentioned Macy's. Um, currently, we have a 6% cashback offer at Macy's. And if you stick around for the event, October 28th and 29th, that percentage is going to get even higher. So we're pretty excited. Wow. All right. So you hinted at something coming up next week, Chris. Tell us about this event called Slick Deals Rewards Offer Drops. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk about this. So to, to kick off the holiday shopping season, we're hosting a two-day online event. It's called Slick Deals Rewards Offer Drops on October 28th and 29th. Offer Drops are an exciting new way to save money at stores you love. So offer drops have a limited number of available drops to claim. So you have to be fast. These are only available for a limited time frame and only to customers who've downloaded the extension and logged into a Slick Deals account. So throughout those two days, offer drops will go live and it's a race to see who is the fastest to claim them before they all get scooped up. You're going to have a number of giveaways and drops, including 100% cash back. So we fully refund you on your purchases, PlayStation 5s, Xbox Series, X's, 
OLED 4K TVs and the crowning jewel, an Asus 3080 Ti GPU. That's a $2,400 GPU that we're giving away. Wow. Plus everyone wins. So if you don't secure one of the offer drops, you get to play a fun game and we just give you points and giveaways. All right. So this is called Slick Deals Rewards Offer Drops, October 28th and 29th. And how do you partake in that? Yeah. So if your users go to slickdeals.net slash offer drops, O-F-F-E-R-D-R-O-P, PS, and it will take you through all the steps of downloading the browser extension, signing up for a Slick Deals account, and as a bonus, anyone who lands on that page and has taken all of those steps gets to reveal one of the secret offer drops. So they get to choose an offer drop that they get to see the amount we're giving away and what time the offer drop will happen. All right. Again, it's slickdeals.net slash offer drops. And that way you'll also sign up for Slick Deals rewards by installing that browser extension, whether you're on Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. And then don't forget October 28th and 29th for the Slick Deals Rewards Offer Drops. It sounds like a fantastic event. And who wouldn't want to make back that kind of cash on their purchases, not to mention even perhaps 100% of their cash back. Fantastic. Chris, great to chat with you. Chris Ashbaugh has been our guest, Senior Product Manager of Loyalty at Slick Deals. Good luck at this event and congrats on the launch of Slick Deals Rewards. Thank you so much, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Again, that's slickdeals.com slash rewards. When we return, we're going to chat with BitSight about cybersecurity ratings for companies. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. Find the Tech It Out podcast at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Tech It Out, powered by Asus for those in search of incredible. Asus creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life, and that includes its line of award-winning laptops and desktops, smartphones, smart watches, tablets, monitors, and much more. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. Not a day goes by we don't hear about yet another cybersecurity attack, it seems, with companies big and small hit with malware, malicious software, there's phishing scams, a damaging ransomware attack. So are things getting worse or does it just seem that way? Well, I know many of our listeners run a company or work in IT for an organization, so you're in for a fascinating discussion on the topic of cyber risk with the leaders in this space, BitSight. We're joined by Chief Technical Officer Stephen Boyer, as well as Anders Norama. He is CEO at Third Party Trust. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Hey, glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen, let's start with you. Please give us a bit of a BitSight 101, if you will. What's the company all about? Yeah, BitSight is a cybersecurity ratings and analytics firm. We are very similar to, think of like a credit score or a credit rating on a company from their financial side. We do that from the cybersecurity side. So we take data and measurement and rate organizations on their cybersecurity performance and look at the risks that may come with that that ultimately translate to dollars or euros so organizations can make better data-driven decisions based on cyber risk. Yeah, I love that you quantify a company's cyber risk, this numerical score like a credit rating. Yes, and it makes it easier to, to understand. What we really try to do is democratize cyber risk so business leaders who may not be cybersecurity experts can understand it and make decisions. So if I were to tell my grandma, this organization is an 800, she understands roughly what that means because she's been tracking her credit scores and she knows, oh, right. an 800 is actually <laughs> high performing. Got it. All right. Awesome. With that in mind, can you give us your take on the current cybersecurity landscape in terms of cyber risk? And, and has that state of cyber risk changed as I alluded to in my introduction? Well, I think your intro captured it and and the frequency of the stories tells you a little bit about what's going on. I was just doing this preparation from this and I just saw some farm organizations just got hit uh, with some ransomware over the last little while. These aren't just, these aren't banks and the typical groups you would think about. I mean, these are, are groups that are helping farmers produce crops. So I would say the breadth and scope of the threat has continued to grow at the same time that we've benefited from all of these digital services. And so the digital services have expanded, but the threat continues to expand with it. We are spending more than we ever have before. And in many ways, the outcomes are worse than they ever have been before. Now we're benefiting right, from all the great services and apps and technologies that we have. But what we also have is attackers and bad actors who are taking advantage of many of the weaknesses that exist in our system. 
Yeah, no doubt that they're exploiting these weaknesses. And certainly since the start of the pandemic, we've seen a huge spike, a huge uptick in attacks across the board. So Anders, tell us a bit about third party trust, your company. And are there any trends you've noticed in the types of events that we've seen over the past couple of years? Sure, Mark. Yeah. So third party trust, we're a technology company. Uh, we help our customers better manage risk around third parties. Well, how do we do that? We allow them in a very scalable fashion to understand you know, the inside operations of every single one of their third parties and then allow them to look across the entire spectrum. Uh, you know, where do they have the risk in their third party ecosystem? And when you talk about third parties, Anders, I just want to clarify to our listeners, it's like I run a bank in the Midwest and I want to outsource my... HR or payroll to a company instead of handling it in-house. Your work with BitSight will help provide a snapshot as to the risk associated with working with that third party. Is that fair? Yeah, that's good. a good way to put it. You know, you mentioned HR systems. So SaaS or technology solutions are obvious third parties. Then you have some that are not so obvious that still have an incredible amount of sensitive data, like mm-hmm. law firms, for example. And there's in the past, if you think about the Panama Papers, and there's many more, you know, law firms sit on very sensitive data. So third-party risk really just means that you're engaging with another company, a third party, and you're sharing non-public information. As right. soon as you share that information, that could be access or, or data, as soon as you share that risk basically exists in that relationship and you need to manage that risk. That's what third-party risk management is all about. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. You know, we partner closely with BitSight. Again, we focus more on asking the questions, getting at the stations, understanding how they're certified. And, and together we feel like it, it's a great way to approach this problem in a scalable fashion for our joint customers. Now, in, in terms of the recent attacks, like what's been eye-opening it's just the way they ended up affecting just so many companies. So look at SolarWinds, for example. The initial estimate was around 18,000 customers. And then they researched it, they looked at it, and they downgraded to, quote unquote, only 100 customers. That's still you know one breach, huge amount of impact. Moving to the KCA breach, right? So that one impacted at least 800 companies downstream, if not many, many more. The trend that I'm seeing is you know this contagion effect to the recent breaches. It, it really stands out to me that something that... You know, we didn't see much before as we're, as we're doing now. Stephen, why do you think there is such a disconnect, it seems, between companies that are getting breached and the cybersecurity landscape as a whole? I mean, you would think companies like SolarWinds, like Anders said, and Kaseya, and more recently Fortinet, that these victims of some of the major ransomware attacks that we've witnessed lately, that they would understand the importance of cyber risk. But then these major leaks or breaches or attacks, they still happen. I always want to be very careful to avoid doing what we call blaming the victim, right? So I think many of these organizations are trying to do their very best and to try to protect their systems. And you do have a pretty sophisticated, motivated adversary, right? And so they are looking to exploit any gap or weakness. What you do have is tremendous growth and complexity. Fair enough. And we'll continue chatting with BitSight and Third Party Trust when we return on Tech It Out. Stay with us. Want to follow Mark? Google him. Mark with a C and Saltzman with a Z. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. This is Tech It Out. Tech It Out with technology columnist, author, and TV personality, Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out. We're chatting with Stephen Boyer, Chief Technical Officer at BitSight. We also have on the line Anders Noramo. He is CEO at Third Party Trust, a software company and an integrator. They also work with BitSight to help companies assess their third party cyber risk as well. Stephen, before the break, you were saying you can't really victimize these companies that were hit with ransomware attacks. It's just that the cyber criminals out there have become a lot more sophisticated. But please, Uh, continue your thought. When you think about game changers in the last little while, what we saw over the last year and a half with the pandemic and businesses adapting to it is just a huge digital transformation or what was been called by McKenzie, the great digital acceleration, where there were Mm -hmm. five years of digital transformation in just a few short months. And so when you're doing that, you're adding complexity and you're opening up the exposure, you're using more third parties, you're deploying new systems, it's opening you up and it's opening up your attack service to more adversaries. And so that complexity 
and the dynamic nature of, of cyber and, and information systems makes it very hard to be perfect. An attacker really only has to do, only has to get through one door or one window mm -hmm. to exploit you. And so you're dealing with this complexity and this dynamic system that's very hard to be you know, perfect in your protections. One thing that people are really challenged with is where to prioritize. And this is where we're getting to this conversation about managing cyber risk. Uh, there are groups that have tried to do it all uh, and tried to do it all equally as opposed to really focusing on the key areas that are the biz largest business risk. And that's where we think being able to understand where those risks are, you know, quantify that and say, hey, we're going to focus our efforts here because we can't be perfect, but we're going to invest in these particular areas to minimize our cybersecurity risk. So yes, the, the incidents continue to go up in part because you have a very, very motivated adversary, especially one who's, who's monetizing ransomware, just a huge clip. And then groups that are dealing with this complexity that's super hard to manage consistently every day. All great points, Stephen. Thank you. Now, Anders, there is so much attention on cybersecurity these days, as we've been chatting about, but also when it comes to policy and in business. So, for example, Biden's push for more stringent cybersecurity safeguards across the board and a plea to other G7 countries to hold hackers accountable. We'll see where that goes. But there's also Apple's announced program to drive continuous security improvements through the supply chain. There's Google's financial commitment to expand zero trust programs, Microsoft, Amazon, and others. So what seems to be influencing these decisions on cyber risk strategy across industries? And in your opinion, what should be influencing a business's cyber risk strategy? Sure. Yeah. I mean, a couple of things come to mind in terms of what has changed for companies and their approach to cybersecurity. So regulation has definitely been a catalyst of change. You know, the past four years, you know, during that administration, there was very little federal regulation. But what we saw happen was really, really the state stepped in. California, New York, they were leading the charge. And then also, like many other enacted cybersecurity and privacy regulations, South Carolina, Texas, et cetera. So going forward, I would predict we're going to continue to see kind of federal government enacting more stringent regulation when it comes to cyber, especially, you know, anyone that's selling goods and services directly or indirectly to, to the federal government. Mm -hmm. You know, we also saw industries self-imposing regulations to strengthen their security posture cyber insurance industry, they're changing their approach also, right? They're shifting some of the risk back to the businesses. The coverage they're writing is not as broad as it used to be. That's changing behavior as well. So those are all reasons kind of like what I've seen. Now, what I think should be changing the approach, you know, in my opinion, you know, it, it would be the need to mitigate the risk to companies, avoid business disruption and, and safeguard the reputations, right? And if I compare it like an established industry process, like supply chain management, and most companies are highly sophisticated. When it comes to cyber, I think we'll get there. It's just going to take a while. Hmm. Stephen? Well, we've also seen, in addition to some of these investments from, from the private sector, is also interest from investors. Investors want to understand what are the risks when they're making an investment and what could go wrong with that investment if there is a cybersecurity incident that has financial impact that's material. So we just had a recent announcement and deep partnership with Moody's uh, to try to bring cybersecurity risk and data into credit ratings and right. to bring that into uh, how investors are, are thinking about uh, the investments. There's also another partnership with a company called Glass Lewis, who may not be a household name, but they're the world's leading proxy advisory firm, which is, should, is advising uh, investors on how to vote on board initiatives and board seats. And so they are bringing now cybersecurity into that area of, of advisory when they're helping people vote on different initiatives. And so cybersecurity is starting to impact business in very different ways than it ever has before. A lot of people mm -hmm. just think about breach, but a an organization with poor governance, although they may not have faced breach, may still have issues where investors are going to demand changes, could be different board uh, composition, could be different investment profiles, because they see investment risk in the company from their cybersecurity performance and governance standpoint. Yeah, good point. Thank you for sharing that, Stephen. And Stephen, there has been a lot of talk these days about the supply chain. 
this seems to impact everybody, even, you know, customers, consumers waiting for packages to arrive or uh, appliances uh, or vehicles arriving to purchase. So obviously there's a lot of reasons for these issues today. COVID and cargo ship challenges to chip shortages and truck driver strikes. And there's a lot of other issues going on. And there's also growing cyber risk on the supply chain. You know, we hear a lot about this notion of supply chain resilience. What does that mean exactly, Stephen? And are the changes and investments that I previously mentioned enough to help? Yes, really a couple of parts to that. One, is the supply chain impacted from a cybersecurity standpoint? And I'll, I'll just use a couple of recent examples here. Mm-hmm. One, there's a one of the world's largest meat packing companies called JBS was yeah. impacted by a ransomware attack. And that impacted their ability to distribute meat to the planet, to feed humans Right. So, yes, a lot of, some of us may be annoyed because we can't order our laptop because some of the chip shortages. But you can imagine what could happen over long periods of time when we can't get food to feed our population. Mm-hmm. The second was a colonial pipeline, which was a you know gas distributor that supplied a lot of the gas to the eastern seaboard. And so you think about that, that's impacting human lives from a cybersecurity incident. And they were offline for a period and ultimately decided to pay the ransom yeah. to get back online. And so you start to think these are real world impacts. This isn't just somebody having their social security number out on the dark web. Uh, this is the ability to feed our population and keep people warm or you know, allow them to cook and, and use their utilities. Yeah. I know those are two, two examples of the biggest ransomware attacks in, in the country this year. And I remember all the images coming out of New York of people trying to fill up their vehicles with gas during all this. So scary time. We have a few more minutes with BitSight and third party trust when we return. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. Check it out. Hosted by Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out, everyone. If you are just joining us, we are chatting with BitSight, the leader in cybersecurity ratings for companies. We've got Stephen Boyer on the line. He's CTO, Chief Technical Officer at the company. We're also joined by Anders Noramo. He is CEO at Third Party Trust, an integrator that works with BitSight, as well as companies to help identify and reduce third-party risk with partners that a company may be considering. Before the break, Stephen, we were talking about the huge ransomware attack attacks in 2021, including high profile attacks on a major US oil pipeline, as well as the world's largest meat processing company. Please continue. Yes. So you imagine, okay, well, that's certainly impacting people's lives and that you you can call that the supply chain or you can call it suppliers, but they are in key vendors in the way that we operate our economy. The resilience aspect is really trying to get to uh, this notion of I am going to know that I'm not going to be perfect and I should anticipate issues. I should anticipate outages. And so I need to manage that risk in a way mm-hmm. that I can either be assured that someone's going to have a better response or that I have some sort of backup or alternatives. And so the resilience piece is just trying to think about a, it's not supply chain perfection. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's really supply chain resilience. Which now I'm building programs. I'm thinking about this from a por- portfolio perspective. I'm trying to come up with alternatives or approaches, contracts, insurance, etc. That's going to help me battle through a negative incident. And so that's where people are talking about. We've conceded that there's no such thing as complete cybersecurity. Only cybersecurity risk that needs to be managed. And so when you're talking about supply chain resilience, you're managing that risk in a way that you are trying to onboard in a way that makes sense. You're trying to require certain levels of controls. You're following up with the vendor to make sure, or the supply chain partner to make sure that they are keeping up with different things. You're monitoring that situation over time and you're building a risk program to report and show progress against those investments. And so this is where we see just a a maturation of supply chain risk to include cybersecurity risk because it's just become more important. Very interesting. Thank you, Stephen. All right. I'm going to ask uh, both of you our final question. Anders, we'll start with you. What advice would you give to someone who's looking to start a career in cybersecurity today? Sure. If you're young and, and you're, you're kind of picking a career to go forward, I mean, I would just encourage you to, you know, at, at your high school, at your college, what, what's the curriculum around cybersecurity? Uh, what, co- what courses do they offer? Right. I don't see this problem going away anytime right. soon. So there's going to be a high demand of talent in the industry for, for decades to come. 
Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and if someone is looking to retool and change career paths, it's a number of certifications that you can study for. You know, just one example would be to become a pen tester, right? Many of them are, are really hands-on. They provide great experience. And, you know, a second option would be to attend, you know, cybersecurity boot camp, right? They're similar to coding boot camps that we saw over the last decade that were really successful in upskilling folks. Oh, wow. That's cool. I didn't realize that there were boot camps to help upskill or reskill folks for cybersecurity. <laughs> Steven, same question to you. Any advice that you'd give to someone thinking about starting a career in cybersecurity? Good idea? <laughs> yes. I think it's a very good idea. And here's why. There are projected millions of open positions uh, in this area. And, and everyone who's, who's written about it and read about it realizes that there's just a huge short uh, of people with the skills and interest level. And when I talk with people who are either starting out their careers or who are wondering what they want to do next, I always offer up, obviously I'm super biased, but have you thought about cybersecurity? And it's not just reserved for the nerd who's a computer hacker who just loves computers. It's pretty broad. And there are lots of different opportunities to get involved uh, and to just understand what are the different uh, roles and uh, aspects that you could participate in. And you do not have to be an expert to start getting involved. You can start looking at what the different roles and positions that are out there. And then there's a lot of free content from YouTube videos to training uh, Anders mentioned the boot camps. There's just a lot of content to learn. Is this something that you would be interested and passionate about? Because it just really takes that curiosity and a little bit of passion. And there are plenty of opportunities. And a lot of organizations are taking people who are not experts with zero experience and training them up. And they're just saying, hey, we're going to go build this workforce of the future. So I'd say take advantage of those openings, those programs that will train you up and a lot of free content because the opportunities are there. All right. And then speaking of a lot of content, bitsite.com is a great resource. You have a lot of different sections there for our listeners to learn more about the organization and your work. And Anders, thirdpartytrust.com is the best place to go to learn about your company as well, correct? Correct. You got it. All right. Stephen Boyer and Anders Noramo, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your insight, your expertise. It's a fascinating discussion. And certainly we're going to be chatting about cyber risk and cyber attacks for the months and years to come. Love to have you back on the show another time. Thanks again. Likewise. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. You're listening to Tech It Out. I'm your host, Mark Saltzman. Hope you've been enjoying the program so far. We caught up with BitSight, Third Party Trust, and Slick Deals. You can say hi on social media. Let me know what you think of the show. It's Mark Saltzman, Mark with a C, S-A-L-T-Z-M-A-N. I'm on Instagram this weekend, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. In our last block, by the way, coming up in a couple of moments, I'm going to chat about some smart home tech. Six different ways to improve your home's IQ. Speaking of intelligence, this show is powered by Asus. For those in search of incredible, Asus creates creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life. And that includes its line of award-winning laptops. There's a few different brands, in fact. There's the Zen Books, which are very innovative. Vivo Books, colorful, playful, all-around great laptops, especially for students. Speaking of students, there's Chromebooks from Asus, Expert Books for more of a business class, and Studio Books for content creators. So a lot to choose from. Asus.com forward slash US forward slash radio for more. That's ASUS.com forward slash US us forward slash radio when we return on tech it out ways to save time money and aggravation by picking up the right smart home devices we'll be right back stay with us follow mark saltzman on facebook on twitter on instagram listen to tech it out whenever you want So as I mentioned earlier in the show, I had a lot of fun talking about smart home tech last week on several TV stations. I was on a lot of CTV stations across the country chatting about a half dozen items that could add convenience or save you money, maybe give you some peace of mind as they're all a little different. So I thought I would share them with you. So you may want to jot down one or two if you're thinking of picking up something for your own home or maybe as a gift idea this holiday season. We'll start off with some smart home tech for the outside 
of your home. First of all, of course, we're doing a lot more online shopping these days. We want to keep an eye on the outside, those parcels to stop those porch pirates. <laughs> so there's this product called the Eufy Cam 2C Pro. It's a two camera kit, in fact, a pair of wireless cameras, each with sharp 2K resolution. So you can see what's happening in and around your home. Maybe you'll put one by your front door, one by your back door. They're both IP67 weatherproof for the outdoors. There's color night vision. And because they're wireless, you don't have to drill any wire into your home, you know, to add power to them or anything like that. They actually last up to a half a year on a single charge. And then you can recharge them up again and use them for another 180 days. So really, really cool stuff. And unlike other cameras where you have to pay a subscription fee to go back in time to see who is at your front door, you do not have to do that with the Eufy Cam, which is spelled E-U-F-Y Cam. And like those video doorbells, chat with whomever is at your front door. There's so it's $2.99 for the Eufy Cam 2 C Pro 2 Cam Kit. And staying with the outdoors is a smart Wi-Fi deadbolt. It's called the Schlage Encode. This is a convenient and secure way to access your front door. So there's four ways to use it. You can use the keypad, which can store up to 100 different codes. So different members of the family can use the code. There's an app, so you can unlock the front door from anywhere. You could be, for example, even in the driveway with a bunch of groceries you're about to bring into the home. You can use your app to unlock the front door so you don't have to fumble with keys. It does take a standard key if you like. And then also, if you're inside near a smart speaker, like a Google or Amazon smart speaker, you can use your voice to lock or unlock the front door. You can also send temporary codes to friends and family or to contractors, babysitters. It's like a unique virtual key that you would send to their phone and they can use that then to get inside, which I really like. So it's $229 for the Schlage Encode Smart Wi-Fi Deadbolt. Next up are a pair of smart home items tied to staying clean, the Moen Sia bathroom faucet with motion sense wave is coming early in 2022. This offers a touchless hands-free way to wash your hands. So you don't have to touch the handle unless you want to adjust the temperature. But just like a public restroom these days, in your own bathroom, you can just wave your hand to start the flow of water. And that, of course, reduces the spread of germs, very top of mind these days for many homeowners. And there are four different finishes to choose from. They're very high tech looking. And speaking of cleaning, the Tinco Floor One S5 is a wet and dry cleaner in one. So it mops and vacuums your floors at the same time. So it cuts cleaning time in half. It's ideal for hard sealed surfaces like tile or hardwood floors. There's an eye loop sensor that automatically adjusts water flow, suction, and speed based on your mess. And you know your floors are clean when the ring at the top of the Tinco Floor One S5 goes from red to blue. So it gives you a visual visual indicator that your job is done. There's also an app for this product. So it'll show you real-time updates. It'll show you things like battery level or your cleaning reports all from your smartphone. So it's the Tinco Floor One S5 T-I-N-E-C-O for $4.99. The last pair of items are great for some peace of mind. The first one is a water sensor to let you know if there's any issues going on, maybe say in a basement, so you can act on it quickly and reduce the odds of a big insurance claim. It's called the MyD-Link Whole Home Smart Wi-Fi Water Leak Sensor Starter Kit. So there's two sensors in the kit. One plugs into your wall, one is battery powered, and they provide an easy way to monitor and help protect your home and valuables from water leaks, even if you're not at home. You're notified on an app and there are no subscription fees. It just uses your Wi-Fi. From D-Link, they're $99, even though I've seen them for as low as $79 on sale. And finally, it can be embarrassing if you're trying to work from home or a cottage, a cabin, if you have missed or dropped calls because the cell phone reception isn't strong. So the SureCall Fusion Professional Signal Booster is billed as the most powerful cell phone signal booster designed for larger homes and, and businesses and summer homes, up to 8,000 square feet, in fact. It does doesn't matter what phone you have or which carrier you're with, it significantly boosts the cell phone reception for calls, texts, and data. And it works with these hotspots too, those little ones that you may buy or rent from your carrier. The SureCall Fusion Professional Cell Phone Booster is $599. So as you can see, no shortage of awesome smart home tech. And if you want to Google my name, Mark Saltzman, Mark with a C, and Smart Home, you can see many of these items in action as well. 
Hey, I hope you enjoyed this weekend's brand new Tech It Out. Come by and say hi if you're on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. It's Mark Saltzman, Mark with a C. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. A healthy week ahead. And I look forward to catching up with you next time, next weekend, for yet another episode of Tech It Out. Be well. Ciao.